about our students' opportunities to compete at the highest level on a truly national stage. The Big Ten also has the stature and the stability that will allow us to truly be a part of shaping and leading through the seismic shifts that are taking place in the world of college sports. And of course, we're also very excited about the academic alignment with the UW's many peer universities through things such as the Big Ten's Academic Alliance. In fact, our Dean of Arts and Sciences, who participated in it in one of her previous jobs, emailed me and told me what a great network that is. Um, now, I want to, I appreciate the fact that this is a bittersweet moment. The UW was a founding member of the Pac-12. And so even as we're excited about this move to the Big Ten, and we really are excited, we recognize that for many, including me, it is a bittersweet moment. I've spent most of my adult life as part of this conference, and I have many, many wonderful memories, as do many of you. We're proud of our rich history with the Pac-12. And for more than a year, all of us worked really, really hard to find a viable path forward that would keep us together. I have tremendous admiration for my colleagues in the Pac-12, and I know that our institutions will continue their many academic and research collaborations and some of the strong friendships that we shared. And we, I want to make 100% clear, we are fully committed to continuing the Apple Cup against Washington State. Um, there is no question that the Apple Cup is a cherished tradition, and we want to continue our long history with the Cougars, including Apple Cup matchups across all of our sports as part of our non-conference schedule. That's a great way to continue this wonderful tradition, this great friendship, and this great rivalry that we have with the Cougs. But in the end, we had to do what was right. It is my responsibility to do what is right for our university and our student athletes and an athletic program that is truly special. And the opportunities and stability offered by the Big Ten were simply unmatched. This is a great move for our UW teams, our fans, and for our entire university. Together with our new conference colleagues, we will be able to truly lead in shaping the future of college athletics, both on and off the field. Thank you. I'm not seeing any raised hands yet, so either nobody's raised their hand or that functionality is not working. Uh, so uh, let's just go to Tim Booth from the Associated Press. If Tim, if you uh, if you'd like to start us out with a question for either uh, Jennifer or uh, Dr. Kelsey, please do. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me, President Kelsey. Um, I'm wondering where did you see the Pac-12 leadership ultimately fall short that led to the decisions that were made over the past few days? Well, you know, I really am someone that likes to look forward rather than backwards. In the end we did not have a deal that we thought was viable in terms of securing our stability and our future. Thank you. Uh, we will go to uh, Noah Corrin and then after Noah, Mike Varel. Go ahead, Noah. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the commitment to keeping the Apple Cup in all sports. Does that include a commitment to playing in Pullman in football every other year? Jen? Oh, yeah, I'll, t I'll take that one. Um, I've had a chance to talk to Pat Chen yesterday. I think many of you know he's a dear friend of mine, and we're both really committed to this series and committed to the state and all of our fans, not just for football, but for all of our sports. Uh, we are still working on the complexities of our football schedule in general uh, for the future years. So we'll, Pat and I will continue to work on the best plan to play the Apple Cup every year. All right. All right. We'll go to Mike Varel, followed by Alex Crescenti. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, for, for President Kosse, just um, you mentioned that 
for more than a year, you've been working to keep this conference together. And, and you know, uh, Commissioner Clay Afkoff was very confident at media days that a, a deal would be done. Obviously, there have been a lot of meetings in the last couple of days. When was it clear to you that the Big Ten was where Washington needed to be? I have to say that this was heart wrenching. It was backwards and forwards. And there were moments when I thought it was going in one direction and then in another. Um, like I say, at the end, we looked at the deal that we had, the only deal that we had. And um, it was clear that it was not giving us what we thought. It was not the deal that we had been discussing just days before. And it was not going to secure. Um, you know, when you have a deal where people uh, are saying that one of the best aspects of it is that you can get out of it in two years, that tells you a lot. And we really needed to have the stability for our players, for our coaches, for our teams. And like I say, there is no question that the Big Ten is a leading conference and that we can play together with our colleagues there a really important role in shaping a future. All right, thank you. We'll go to Alex Presenti of KXLY TV in Spokane. Uh, Nico Tamarian will be next. Go ahead, Alex. Hi, uh, do you worry at all uh, with the health and the safety of your student athletes with having to go out on a Tuesday or Wednesday night to Scataway, New Jersey or College Park, uh, three hours away, and then keep going back and forth, back and forth? You know, football obviously will be fine with, you know, a lot of those flights, but do you worry with the, some of the smaller athletic programs that they're going to have to be constantly going back and forth across the country for four or five months? If, if I could on President sure. Kelsey, I'd love to answer that. And thank you for the question, Alex. I mean, one of the things we're most proud of here at the University of Washington is that we put our student athletes at the center of all of our decision making. Um, this move to join the Big Ten is about our student athletes, not just our current student athletes, but our future student athletes. Uh, I'll be the first to say that uh, this is not perfect. You know, there will be challenges. This does require a lot of change and adaptability. But what I do know is that we have a very active student leadership group that has an incredible partnership with our senior leadership team. And we're gonna be working side by side to develop the be best plan and that we will have the resources to su support our student athletes as we move into this transition. All right, thank you, Jen. Uh, Nico Tamaria next, uh, followed by Dan Riley. Nico from Como TV, go ahead, Nico. Uh, thank you. Uh, and this is for President Kelsey or Jennifer, whichever is uh, whoever wants to take this one. Uh, you mentioned it and it was clear this was the decision that had to be made for the security of the university and the athletic programs. Well, but, but, you know, how difficult was it as it came down to it to really make that finality of this decision? I mean, ending all the tradition, even if you had to do it, how difficult was it to make that final decision to go in this direction now? You know, first of all, I am the president of the university and I take full responsibility for this decision. No question that Jen and I were tied at the hip talking back and forth. I don't know how many phone calls we had, as well as consulting with others in the university, but ultimately it was my decision. I, I'm probably the only president in, uh, in most of the big five. I've been at this University of Washington for 38 years. I understand commitment. I understand loyalty. This was heart-wrenching, but at the end, it is my responsibility to do what I think is right for our university, our student athletes, and our programs, and this was the right decision. If I could just add, you know, as the athletic director, it's my responsibility to deliver a, a top-notch athletic program that matches this world-class university, and as part of that, we make really hard decisions. And I too uh, wanna express that this was one of the most difficult uh, decisions that we've had to make uh, because of the relationships and the people uh, that are involved and the longstanding that that AD group in the, in the PAC 12, we've been through a lot together over the last several years. And I think when we make tough decisions, we have to always recognize the impact that we have on other people. And it's a moment to do that. And that was what made it so difficult. But I want to be clear that embracing the future does not require us to dishonor the past. We want to make this last year in the Pac-12 a really special one. And we want to go out in glory and really honor 
these traditions that were very special. We don't need to, these memories as part of this conference will be in my heart forever, but we need to embrace the future and I'm excited about moving forward. Thank you. All right, let's go, let's go to Dan Raley. Dan will be followed by Christian Capel and then Kim. Go ahead, Dan Raley from SI.com. Hi, I was just wondering, once the deal was laid out uh, by the Pac-12, who made the first call? Uh, did the Big Ten call you or did you call the Big Ten? And then as a follow-up question, are you concerned about the cost of travel that's going to come off of all of this? Can I take that one on Amari first? Is that is that okay? Um, you know, I, we're not going to get into all the specifics of who and when and, and where uh, regarding um, this decision. Uh, but what we will tell you is that we made this decision in a very deliberate and thoughtful and intentional way. And part of that decision was that we felt very confident in the agreement we had with the Big Ten to have the resources to adapt to uh, the challenges that you mentioned, including travel costs and additional resources that our student athletes are gonna need to have a successful experience in the Big Ten. Yeah, and if I might add, we are leaving some colleagues behind and that's painful, but we're also joining some new colleagues, some of whom were also in the Pac-12 and we do have a group on the West Coast as part of the Big Ten now as well as I know a number of the other presidents in the Big Ten, and it is an amazing group. All right, thank you. Uh, again, raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, next question will be from Christian Capel, followed by uh, Kim Grinnells. Go ahead, Christian from Montlake.com. Yeah, Jen, um, it's been reported that the Big Ten distribution will start at $30 million a year for you guys, raising by a million dollars each year after that. Is that accurate? Uh, are there additional funds that, that you guys are tapping into? I know there's been some mention of maybe borrowing against future earnings as well. I appreciate the question, Christian. We're really confident in the agreement that we have with the Big Ten and the resources that are going to be provided for us, not just short term, but long term. Uh, we're not going to get into the details of the financial agreement today, but we are looking forward to sharing that in the very near future. All right, we'll go to Kim Grinnells from 24-7 Sports, followed by Tim Booth from the AP. Go ahead, Kim. Yeah, President Kase, just to maybe piggyback a little bit on what Christian asked. Uh, you know, the biggest problem with the conference seems to have been the revenue gap between the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and the SEC. With the new agreement, if the numbers uh, that are being bandied about are true, it doesn't seem to really get any closer to that revenue gap. What can you do to close that revenue gap? And then just kind of a follow-up. When we deal with our um, Big Ten uh, counterparts, it just seems like the university itself and the athletic program work at a much tighter level together. It's more of a partnership. And at UW, it's at times seems like it's split between upper campus and lower campus. Can we anticipate maybe a little bit more closer working relationship between the academic side and the athletic department? Yeah, I, I want to be clear. This was not just about dollars and cents. This was about national visibility for our players, being on linear TV so that they could be seen, so that they could have the national exposure. It was about stability. It was about a contract that didn't have a two years and you can all split up. It was about having a future that we could count on and build towards. Um, so it wasn't just dollars and cents. Um, and in terms of, you know, uh, you know, lower and upper campus, I can assure you, I mean, how many other conferences have as their, fa as their FAR, their faculty athletic representative, someone that went on to be Dean of the School of Engineering and someone that is now our first um, faculty regent. Our relationships across are incredibly tight, no question. Jen, do you wanna add to that? Let's keep rolling. All right, thanks to you both. Uh, we'll go to Tim Booth from the Associated Press, followed by Noah Corrin. Go ahead, Tim. President Kause, you you mentioned um, a, a two-year opt-out a couple times now. You mentioned uh, linear TV. What were some of your other concerns or what additional concerns about the deal that was presented by Commissioner Klyovkov last week? Um, 
we had expected to have um, to have a couple of deals to look at that didn't turn out that way. Um, like I say, I want to be clear. I don't want to point fingers at anybody. Um, this was a really, really difficult situation that the commissioner found himself all year. He worked really hard. I have every reason to believe that offers fell apart because of other, you know, uh, uh, factors beyond his control. Um, but at the end, I do think that at least some level of linear TV mattered. We um, have a history with the Pac-12 networks that wasn't a good one. Um, again, it's not, you know, that I think that there weren't long-term possibilities, but there was enough. The fact that there was enough uncertainty that a plus was the fact that we could opt out tells you something. We had been living in uncertainty for too long to continue in that level. It makes it very, very hard to build. All right, we'll have just a couple more. We have three hands raised. We'll take those three questions from Noah, then Mike, and then Mike Franco. Go ahead, Noah. Thank you. Um, you mentioned earlier that you'll still be playing some previous Pac-12 schools, USC, UCLA. Um, if the Big Ten was considering expansion in the future, would the University of Washington leadership advocate for adding previous Pac-12 schools, like the current four remaining? Well, I can tell you that, you know, like I say, right now, I, I would not make any commitment without seeing the details, but, you know, that would be a whole lot of fun. All right, we'll go to Mike Farrell from the Seattle Times and then Mike Franco from KLAY Radio. Go ahead, Mike Farrell. Uh, yeah, for either uh, President Kause or for Jen, um, obviously you're making this move with the University of Oregon, a longtime rival, and I'm and a partner as well. And, I, and I'm curious, um, how much collaboration was there between your two schools throughout this process, and how important was it for you to stay together, whether it was to remain in the Pac-12 or to go to the Big Ten? Well, you know, uh, the the students have this uh, phrase they use, frenemies. And uh, I have always felt that the president of the University of Oregon has been a real frenemy. And there is no question that uh, we discussed this, that we talked about it, that we went, you know, that, that we both talked about the pluses and minuses. And I do think there is no question that we did want, I mean, the rivalry between our schools is absolutely amazing. And again, with both of us going together, it, we have a West Coast presence. Jen, do you want to add anything? No, good. All right, we'll close things out little, with the question. Yep, I sorry. even have a little plastic duck that I give to my dog every time we play <laughs> the ducks. All right, we will close things out with a question from Mike Franco from KLAY Radio in Tacoma. Go ahead, Mike. All right, Mike, you're still muted. Give it just another second. All right, I think we're just gonna go ahead and have to wrap it up with that then. Thank you both for your time. Thanks for everybody for you joining there? us. Oh, there you go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Real quick, yes, Jen, um, you, you both have had uh, obviously a long relationship. University of Washington certainly has recognized a significant player academically, athletically. Now you're moving on to a conference some of us would describe as huge. Uh, based on last year, the University of Washington would be eighth in attendance in the Big Ten. So it's a little different environment. Can you talk a little bit about your expectation as far as your relationships that you either need to build or already have with some of your counterparts? You're going to be working on scheduling and all that sort of thing. Well, yeah, let me first say one of the um, reasons why we felt so bullish about joining the Big Ten and competing against schools with sold out stadiums and great brands is that we see Washington in the same light. And we knew when we made that decision that Husky Nation, you know, was going to rally around us and, and be part of continuing to evolve and grow and elevate this athletic department um, at the highest level. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they do have so much attendance that there is so will push us and will push our fans to do even better. And we will. This is going to be exciting. I understand some of the sadness. It will take some of us longer or shorter to grieve a bit. Um, you know, there are some great traditions there, but I know that we can count on our fans. Our players are pumped. Our coaches are pumped. 
we are going to make this work and it is going to be awesome. That sounds like a way to finish things off. Thank you, President Cassie. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for everybody who joined us here today. Uh, with that, we will call it a day. Thank you very much.